I'm just here for eye candy. <laughs> that's it. Well, <laughs> always eye candy. Just that's all I'm here for today. Well, first, before we play a game, let's just uh, get to know you a little bit. Allows you, Mike. Sorry. All right. um, I grew up in uh, Blooming Prairie in Austin, Minnesota. I awesome blossoms. Yes, <laughs> and um, I was an only child, so I spent a lot of time reading and writing and hanging out with myself. And uh, then, when I got older, I started trying to get published and wrote a lot of books and started self-publishing. That's awesome. Yeah. And then that led to so much more for you. Yeah, I mean, once once I started self-publishing, it started out kind of slow, and then it quickly snowballed and took off, and I was picked up by a traditional publisher, and now I write professionally. Have people asked you how it is you connect so well with your readers? Yes, I'm not really sure. I mean, I just try to, to kind of um, write books that I would want to read, and books that I wanted to read when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think that really helps people, because I'm just trying to write for myself when I was a teenager. There's no such thing as just a magical success. Yeah, I, I think, you know, when I started self-publishing, one, one of the reasons that I was so successful is because I had written, like, a dozen books before. So when I started publishing, I could just get them all out there and get reach readers, and, and so I think that helped me grow an audience. Right. But to other people, it just looked like I just woke up one day and put books online, but it was years of work in the making. And when you talk to people now that want to be authors, maybe young people, what, what do you, what's your advice to them? I always tell them to read a lot and, and write a lot. I think the hardest thing for me as a professional author was learning to handle criticism and reviews. So I think it's important to really find a good critique group or people who can read your books and give you advice and also help you grow as a writer. Yeah, well, and once you get to the book stage, editors are so important. Yes, editors are like invaluable. I mean, I have an amazing editor with my publisher now and I, I think I'm a much better writer because of her. Do you have a, a guilty pleasure book you read? Gosh, I, I, I think the closest thing I have is, uh, to a guilty pleasure is uh, V.C. Andrews. I started reading those books when I was right. younger, and, and now I still kind of just enjoy them, even though a lot of the books have a really similar plot right. structure. But, but they have those cool holes in the front they, of the books. They do, yes, yeah, so you could peek in. I think right. that's, that's what got me, and now I'm stuck with them. Yes, I, I read them, too. <laughs> but they were good books. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's something, if you enjoy it, Mm -hmm. That's one thing I think people don't understand, that when you enjoy something, it's like Duke Ellington said about music, if it sounds good, it is good. And yes. if you enjoy it, it is good. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I try to, like, I did used to view things as guilty pleasures, but as I've gotten older, it's more, if I enjoy it, then I shouldn't feel guilty about it. You know, you're right. Absolutely right. Which makes the Bee Gees not a guilty pleasure anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Love listening to them. Well, let's play a little game, and if, if you get your answers right, they win. So there's no pressure here at all. <laughs> they could get a brand new car. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so uh, it's a multiple choice. So 81% of us just wish the election was A, over already, B, over tomorrow, or C, a head of cabbage. Um, <laughs> I, I, I guess A? Yes, over already. <laughs> Amen to that. Okay, yeah. number two. The top minor crimes we're likely to commit are returning something after wearing it once, taking a sick day when you're not sick. I don't know why that would be a crime. <laughs> and wishing there would be an Elf and Murder, She Wrote mashup TV series, eating maple-flavored breakfast meats, or illegally downloading music and movies. I would love an Elf and Murder, She Wrote mashup, but I don't <laughs> think that's illegal, so yeah. I will go with C. What if Elf discovered that the murder she wrote gal was actually committing all the murders. <laughs> <laughs> no one believes me. <laughs> well, I'm excited to have you at the Rochester Women's Fall Expo. It's going to be very cool. What time are you going to be there? Uh, I think noon to 2. Noon to 2 o'clock, and people can just come up to the booth and say hey. Yes, I'll be there signing books, talking. I think I'll have some stickers and stuff, too. So. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a book you're reading right now you'd like to recommend? That I'm personally reading? Yeah. Um, I Oh, I, got, I, I just started... Um, Last scene leaving, but I don't remember who it's by because I'm terrible. But Th that one person that wrote it. Yes, it came out recently. It's a new young adult book, and so. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, thank you. Oh, quick! One more thing before you go. Um, I was probably working nights when you were living in uh, Blooming Prairie in Austin. What? How old were you then? Like ten or eleven, twelve. And you listened. Yeah, so because I went to bed like right around nine o'clock, and that's when the top nine at nine would start, and so I would record it on my little recorder so I could listen to the songs the next day. I love it. Yeah. I, I hope I didn't anger you ever by talking over the songs. No, no. Wow.
And then I play this on the air, and it turns out Todd thinks I did talk too much over the songs. James, you made it dang near impossible to tape any song off the radio with your talking. There was many a song which I had to wait hours upon hours to tape because of your talking. So, there, James Raby.